I now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. Uh, I want to welcome everyone who's in attendance, and we have standing room only tonight. Uh, and uh, welcome, welcome to all of you. Also, those folks that are watching, going to be watching the uh, meeting on G10 television. Uh, we're going to begin tonight. Uh, I'm going to have you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Bob Warden, followed by the invocation by John Carter, our City Attorney. Please rise. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we pause this evening as always to give you thanks, to acknowledge your presence, and to thank you for this beautiful day, for the blessings you bestow upon us individually, and the blessings you bestow upon us as the city of Jacksonville. We give thanks this evening for all the young participants who have participated in the Onslow, the Onslow Commission for Persons with Disabilities contest. We give thanks for them and their families and their participation. And we pray that you would continue to bless them in the years ahead. We pray for our service members who are serving us here and around the world. We pray for those who mourn, especially the loss of life in Nepal with our military and in Florida, to be with those families. And as always, we ask that your presence be and your guidance be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Council, I would now entertain a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. So, so moved. moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> agenda is adopted now we're going to do some presentations and I'm going to come around front I'm going to ask Miss Washington if you'll bring those with you and accompany me I, I appreciate it We're going to the first presentations we're going to make tonight was is as uh, Mr. Carter mentioned is with the Onslow Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, we have the uh, annual uh, poster contest. Po well, actually, it's poster poetry and essay contest. And at this time, I'd like to ask a very special person to come up and join me, Miss Alex Shreve, who's the chairperson of the Onslow Commission for Persons with Disabilities, to assist in presenting the awards. And I'm going to hand you these awards. Ms. Alex, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, I'm going to try to adjust this thing to accommodate my height. Okay. <laughs> That's when. There we go. Thank you. Thanks a lawyer. That's right. It takes a, takes a lawyer. The Onslow Commission for Persons with Disabilities in the City of Jacksonville sponsored their annual poster poetry and essay contest to help promote disabilities awareness week the theme for the contest this year was focus on the ability this the disability very catchy yeah the judging panel uh, said the entries this year were amazing uh, they deliberated a very long time before making their final decisions, and the panel selected a winner from each participating grade level that submitted entries into the contest. The winning students this year will receive an award certificate, which Alex is going to pass out. And also, uh, Council Member Washington is holding uh, a stack full of $50 gift cards, so each one's going to get one gift card. That's pretty neat. I'd like to have one of them myself. <laughs> All the, also this year, a teacher from a, a part, participating elementary, middle, and a high school was selected to receive an Excellence in Participation Teacher Award based on student entries that most clearly related to the theme. 
the teachers are also receiving an award certificate and a $50 gift card. In addition, the Oslo Commission will host a pizza party for the teachers and their class at a future date. Now that's neat. Yeah, I like pizza party. Yeah. All right, the winning entries are on display in the lobby out here. If you get if you get a few moments, if you haven't taken a look at them, please by all means go out there and check out some of the artwork, some of the poetry, and all the uh, essays that are, are displayed out there. How many entry, how many displays do you have out there? Uh, I think there's a full one back here. Okay. Okay. Very good. You'll see some pretty creative stuff. Definitely. Creative art. I shouldn't use stuff. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call up some folks now, and if you will come up, uh, we, we would certainly love to be able to present uh, these items to you and, and have a photo taken with you, and you can also uh, have that photo taken with your parents or, or your teachers or whoever you want to bring up with you. So I'm going to start here uh, with the second grade, uh, the second grade winner. And this student's name is Callie Slayer. I hope I said that right. Look at her. And she is, uh, you're from Dixon High School, or Dixon School, right? <laughs> Dixon, her parents probably think she's in high school. Uh, and Miss Howard is your teacher? Oh, okay. Well, thank you for coming out tonight. Is your mom and dad with you? Okay, they got stage fright. They didn't want to come up with you? Okay. Uh, look back that way, Mr. Wolf. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you. Congratulations, Callie. I can't wait to see your dinner. Is yours a picture, a poem, poem, or an essay? I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. But congratulations. Thank you for coming out tonight. Third grade, we have Jaden McKenzie. Jaden here. Oh, yeah. Jaden, how are you doing, sir? Do we have your moms here? Okay. And Jaden is also Dixon Elementary School. I take it Dix Dixon Elementary, if I got that right. Uh, not high school, Dixon <laughs> Elementary. And Miss Howard's your teacher also. All right. Thank you so much. Our fourth grade winner this year is Jeremiah Philogene. <laughs> Jeremiah is in the fourth grade at Hunters Creek Elementary School, and Miss Crosby's his teacher. Oh, don't you look the gentleman tonight. <laughs> you look so sharp. <laughs> Congratulations, Congratulations. <laughs> Our fifth grade winner, uh, Landon Prescott, also from Dixon Elementary. And, and Ms. Howard is also his teacher, or sponsor, or principal. Is it principal? Art teacher. Art teacher, okay, there we go. Why don't, you, why don't you look back there at the camera so we can get us a photo with you. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Our sixth grade winner, Alexandra Blanc. Your mom and dad here? 
Let's get us a group picture, would you? Alexandra is uh, a student at Brewster on campus here, and uh, Mrs. Coleman is her teacher. Come on up, teacher. <laughs> Don't want to forget you. Good job. Did you need to get a photo? Did you want to get a photo with your camera? Okay. You have it? Okay. You're welcome. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, our seventh grade uh, winner from Dixon, and Mrs. Hurst is his teacher, Miss Hurst, Brett Hester. Well, excuse me. <laughs> I, I like to get it right. Brett. It's Brett. Oh, come up here, Brett. You're not done yet. You ain't gonna, you ain't, you're not going to take that $50 and run away with it. <laughs> Brett Hester is, is from Dixon. Thank you, Brett. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> Uh, our eighth grade winner from Brewster uh, is Danielle, or uh, I'm, I'm messing, okay, I, that's, a, that's one of those, uh, Daniel Gonzalez. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel is, uh, his, his teacher is Mr. Bellevue, Bellevue? Bellevue. Bellevue. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Yes. Good job. Thank you. Uh, we're in our last group here. Uh, we're going to go all the way to the twelfth grade, and our winner uh, is from Lejeune High School, and that's your stomping grounds, right? Uh, and Dr. K uh, is the, the teacher there, and this would be Christopher Rodriguez. Dr. K, I presume. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Thank you very much, and congratulations. I can't wait to see your work of art. Uh, art? Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you all very much. For those of you who may not know this, Christopher Rodriguez was nominated and won the selection of the 2015 Military Child of the Year Award, so I think he owes a special example. That's quite a recognition. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Dr. K, thank you. Now we have our 2015th Excellence in uh, Participation Teacher Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would go without saying if we didn't give Miss Beth Howard from Dixon Elementary School some recognition <laughs> since she, her name is all over the uh, sheet here. Bring them up, man. Get a photograph with them. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. I don't mind. Not one bit. Thank you so much for your participation. This is really great. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Right behind the little fellas. Right there. there you go. There you go. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Vanessa Coleman, a sixth grade teacher from Brewster Middle School. Come on, come on, Miss Coleman students. There you go. Thank you so much All and right. congratu congratulations. <laughs> and last but not least, Dr. K from Lizard Camp Lejeune High School. Thank you all very much. Uh, I think we'll. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Why don't, why don't we get all of our folks down here? And get. Uh, I'll get uh, be able to get one big group picture of them. So. And teachers. Bring my win my winners and my teachers. Uh, Walk somebody to death just about, aren't we? Let me get this out. about the uh, contest and if you don't mind we certainly appreciate the teachers um, and the hard work that they put into the the entries that we get every year I think each year that we do this and I've lost count of how many years because I've been with the Commission I think about 15 15 years previously we were known as the mayor's committee but it's just always amazing to see the commitment that the students the passion of the students the work that they put into this and so we just continue to see great work from the community every year and we we look forward next year to um, to the teachers putting forth the effort to get the students involved because it's really designed for our students to understand their peers who have some some type of challenge or disability because we know that they can mentor those individuals we can break down the barriers and really make it more successful for all of our students in their um, in their school environment so thank you again for your participation thank you for everyone being here tonight um, on behalf of the Commission thank you All right, the next few promotions uh, we're going to do is, uh, well, the first three will be some, uh, some uh, from the fire department, and I'd like to ask uh, our public uh, safety director, Chief Mike Yanero, and Deputy Chief uh, Spencer, uh, Spencer Lee, are you? Okay, Jeff's going to do it. Jeff Hardison's <coughs> going to do it. Jerry Hardison, why am I calling you Jeff? Okay, I called, I called you Jerry earlier, but... Jeff on the mind, I guess. Um, the first uh, promotion we're going to do tonight, I'm going to ask uh, Roger Parker and his family if they'll come up for me, please. The current promotional succession at the uh, 
Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services created vacancies at the rank of driver one. And these candidates that are uh, going to be promoted tonight are being promoted to the uh, position of driver one. And uh, I want to appreciate you all coming tonight. Is, this must be your father yes, sir. or older brother? <laughs> oh, okay. Do you have other family members here that you'd like to have come forward? I take that as a no, and I guess your I guess your older brother here, your dad, is going to be a Bible for you. And what I'd like for you to do, Roger, is repeat after me. Uh, if you'll put your hand on the Bible, raise your other hand. I, Roger Parker, uh, Roger Parker. do solemnly swear or affirm that I will be alert and vigilant in performing my duties as a driver one of the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. The city of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. That I will not be influenced in any matter. That I will not be influenced in any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and execute. Discharge and execute. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As a driver operator one. As a driver operator one. Of the city of Jacksonville. Of the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. According to the best. According to the best. Of my skill, abilities, and judgment. Of my skill, abilities, and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Let me uh, let me talk let me talk about Roger real quick here. Roger's being promoted from firefighter three, which he currently holds. Well, not anymore. We've sworn you to driver one. Uh, Roger began his career with Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on January 19, 2010, as a firefighter trainee. It don't seem that long ago since I swore you in for that. Yeah. Okay. He was promoted through the ranks of firefighter one and two, and was promoted to firefighter three in September of 2011. He holds cert certifications as a firefighter two, a fire inspector, level level two, uh, NC uh, driver's operator, emergency vehicle uh, driver, EMT basic and technical rescue vehicle machine machinery rescue. And I want to congratulate you on another step towards a, a illustrative career that you're yeah. heading into. Thanks. So that means he gets to drive the fire truck now? Okay. <laughs> I always thought that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to call up Raymond Sorrell and any family members that he has with him that wants to come up. Raymond is being promoted from Firefighter 3 to Driver 1 also. Uh, Raymond began his public safety career with the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on January 19, 2010 as a firefighter trainee. He was promoted through the ranks of uh, Firefighter 1 and 2 and was promoted to Firefighter 3 in March of 2014. Raymond holds certifications as a Firefighter 2, Fire Inspector Level 2, NC Driver Operator, uh, emergency vehicle driver, EMT basic, and technical rescue uh, vehicle machinery rescue. And if you would please place your hand on the Bible and raise your uh, right hand and repeat after me. I, Raymond Sorrell. I, Raymond Sorrell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that subtle correction. Do solemnly, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will be alert and vigilant. That I will be alert and vigilant. 
in performing my duties. In performing my duties. As a driver operator one. As a driver operator one. Of the city of Jacksonville. Of the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. That I will not be influenced. That I will not be influenced. In any matter. In any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution. The Constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge and execute. Discharge and execute. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As a driver operator one. As a driver operator one. Of the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. The City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. According to the best. According to the best. Of my skill abilities and judgment according to my skill abilities and judgment so help me god so help me god congratulations Good job. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right, this is an easy name. I'll get this one right. <laughs> this time I'd like to ask Michael Williams and his family if they'll join me up front. Michael Williams began his career with the Jacksonville Fire Emergency Services on November 15, 2010 as a firefighter trainee. After promotion through the ranks of Firefighter 1 and 2, he was promoted to Firefighter 3 in August of 2013. Michael holds certifications in Firefighter 2, Fire Inspector Level 2, NC Driver Operator, Emergency Vehicle Driver, EMT Basic and Technical Rescue, Rescuer Vehicle mach Machinery Rescue. And at this time, I will administer the oath to you. If you would place your hand on the Bible and raise your other hand and repeat after me. I, Michael Williams, I, Michael Williams do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will be alert and vigilant, that I will be alert and vigilant in, performing my duties in performing my duties as a driver operator one, as a driver operator one of the city of Jacksonville. Of the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. That I will not be influenced in any matter. That I will not be influenced in any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. And that I will support and maintain. And that I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and execute, discharge and execute the duties of my office, the duties of my office as a driver operator one, a driver operator one of the city of Jacksonville, of the city of Jacksonville fire and emergency services, fire and emergency services according to, according to the best of my skill, the best of my skill abilities and judgment, abilities and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mike. You want to get a better picture, Bill? seems a lot happier now anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.
<clears throat> the current promotional succession at the Jacksonville Police Department has created vacancies at the rank of sergeant and lieutenant. The candidates uh, participated in an extensive process uh, consisting of a formal uh, presentation and a series of oral interviews. Uh, and I'd like at this time to uh, call up Officer Chris Funky and any uh, family members that he has accompanying him tonight. Chris. You got a lot of responsibility, okay? So stand by. Here we go. Uh, Chris is being promoted. I'm not going to do that yet. Chris uh, is being promoted from officer, police officer two to sergeant. That's a big step. Uh, Christopher Michael Funky graduated from Richlands High School in 2004. After attending basic law enforcement training at Coastal Carolina Community College, Chris began his law enforcement career with the Jacksonville Police Department in August of 2008. He has served in the patrol division and on the community response team and was promoted to police officer two in April of 2013. He is certified as a police training officer and bicycle officer and has earned the intermediate law enforcement certi certification for the North Carolina Department of Justice. Chris has received awards for his work as a police officer including the agency's po uh, police commendation award in August 2013 for his role in the apprehension of a rapist and the Medal of Valor for his response to a dangerous crash scene. So at this time, it honors me to administer the oath of, uh, to you. And if you'll repeat after me, Chris. I, Christopher Michael Funky. I, Christopher Michael Funky. Do solemnly swear. Swear that I will support and maintain, that I will support and maintain the, Constitution and laws the Constitution and laws of the United States, of the United States and, the Constitution and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, and laws of North Carolina not, inconsistent therewith, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully, and, that I will faithfully and, impartially and impartially discharge the duties of my office, discharge the duties of my office as sergeant. As sergeant of the City of Jacksonville Police Department. Of the City of Jacksonville Police Department. And maintain and uphold, and maintain and uphold all the laws and regulations. Of the, laws and regulations of the City of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Of the City of Jacksonville, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. You take that away from me. Now is your time to take out any frustration you may have with him. <laughs> You're sticky. I just, just give him a little poke with it every once in a while. Though. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Courtney. Courtney. Courtney, your job ain't done yet. Uh, go ahead and track him one time with it. Give him those railroad tracks here. <laughs> Who's this? Is he getting promoted too? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Wide open, I bet, isn't it? All right, turn around and let me see. Looks good. Thank yeah. you, sir. <laughs> Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. 
Steve Wells and your family that may have a company. Who in the world is Steve Wells? <laughs> Danny, come on up front here. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Daniel Stephen Wells graduated from Jacksonville High School in 1990. He completed a basic law enforcement school and training at Coastal Carolina Community College in 1994 and began his law enforcement career uh, at the Onslow County Sheriff's uh, Office. He signed on with the Jacksonville Police Department in 2000 after serving as a police officer in North Topsail Beach. <laughs> He has served as the patrol division and community uh, in the patrol division and the community response team. Uh, he is also S Sergeant Wells is also a certified a certified police training officer and holds the advanced law enforcement certification from the uh, North Carolina Department of Justice. He was awarded the agency's life saving award in March of 2013 for his response during a medical emergency. And at this time, I'd like to administer the oath to you, if you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Daniel Stephen Wells, I, Daniel Stephen Wells do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support and maintain, that I will support and maintain the, Constitution and laws the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, and North Carolina not inconsistent therewith and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office as sergeant of the City of Jacksonville Police Department and maintain and uphold all the laws and regulations of the City of Jacksonville, North Carolina. So help me God. Congratulations, Dan. Who's going to do the honors? There we go. face the bill back there. Let's get a little photograph with you guys. Chuck, you're up. Uh, I'm going to bring your family and your, your preachers here also, and all, all the children, the whole, got the whole clan. Okay. As you should. Let's see. We got that. Chris, are you going to do that? All right. For, uh, before we get started here, I want to talk a little bit about Chuck. He was born in Lang. Langhorn, Pennsylvania. Uh, Charles James III grew up in Jacksonville in a military family, graduated from Jacksonville High School in 1994. After four years of service in the Marine Corps, he returned to Jacksonville and completed basic law enforcement training at Coastal Carolina Community College in 1998. He began his law enforcement career with the Jacksonville Police Department in August of 1998. Chuck worked his way up through the ranks, and, and Chuck worked pretty hard. I got to watch most of it, so anyway, we're good. 
uh, worked his way up uh, the ranks serving in patrol, investigations, and special operations division, and as a school resource officer at Jacksonville High School. He has served as a supervisor in patrol, com the community response team, and the traffic division. In his current role as supervisor of the, uh, he's currently the supervisor of the evidence division. Chuck holds the advanced law enforcement certification from the North Carolina Department of Justice, as well as an associate arts of arts degree from Campbell University and a bachelor's of criminology from Mount Olive College. And it's with a great deal of pride and, and pleasure that I get to administer to you the oath of office. If you would please repeat after me. I, Charles James III. I, Charles James III. Do solemnly swear, Do solemnly swear. That, I will support and maintain that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina, not inconsistent therewith, and that I will faithfully and impartially, faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of my office, the of my office <coughs> as lieutenant. As lieutenant of the City of Jacksonville Police Department. Of the City of Jacksonville Police Department. And maintain and uphold. And maintain and uphold all the laws and regulations. All the laws and regulations. Of the City of Jacksonville, North Carolina. The City of Jacksonville, North Carolina. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Lieutenant James. You've done that before too, haven't you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> When's your next inspection? Tonight? <laughs> Congratulations. So why don't y'all get together and have a nice picture of the whole group of you there? Bill. There's a lot of you, so I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, to take the opportunity to have all the uh, employees of the Department of Public Safety please stand for just a minute. <clears throat> the, ones, the ones standing in the back, I think it's so important uh, how close this, this family is. Uh, they're here to, to uh, celebrate these promotions of these uh, firefighters and police officers who protect us every day. And, uh, you know, we we kind of take things for granted but but these are the people that put their lives on the line and uh thank you for that so Okay, we're going to take just a real brief pause here. We're not really going anywhere, but I'm going to allow a lot of you that have come here tonight to observe your, uh, your partners, uh, your, your work buddies and everything get promoted, and uh, all you families that came tonight and teachers that came for the uh, poster contest, which just was so wonderful. Thank you very much for coming out in support of your child and your teacher. Uh, I'll give you all a chance to uh, leave if you want to. You're welcome to stay.
she does. She does. She's 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 she needs his clothes. Yeah. This woman, I don't think this is mine. I think it's only my dollars. This is four for five. This is my mom's hair. Yeah. Come on, it's fine. Don't lose your money. You know how she's about to lose the money? Next, uh, next item on the agenda here is the uh, first session of public comment for the evening, and uh, I have several people that have signed on to speak, and I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start in order that they are on the list. Everybody's on the list, and I'll ask Junie Christian. Christian, how you doing? 
I am fine. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of our council. I just happened to be in the neighborhood and wanted to stop by to say thank you. And you might be wondering, thank you for what? But the simple act of hanging 100 jeans in City Hall was tremendous. So many people have remarked to us how much uh, it's touched their lives, um, how much it touched the lives of the kids that, that, that was with them. And uh, it just made all the difference for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And, um, you know, to have a caring community like you, folks who step up and say, you know, we care and we want to make sure that the message gets out, we just wanted to stop by and say thank you on behalf of the team at the Onza Women's Center, our board of directors. Um, it meant so much to us. And it made a huge difference in continuing the message. Because after you hung it in, your, in this wonderful uh, uh, building for the community, First Citizen Bank also hung it in their bank. And so uh, the jeans are now the traveling jeans. They will move from here. They will move to the library. And um, it meant so much to us. And so we wanted to come by and say thank you so much. To the citizens of Jacksonville, I just want to, to remind them that 347-910-347-4000 is your gateway to services for domestic violence or sexual assault. And feel free to call that number whether something happened to you yesterday uh, day before yesterday or 20 years ago. Uh, the legacy that you have left for us, a place that you can go for healing and reconciliation, does exist at the Onzo Women's Center. So on behalf of the board, my staff, the team, thanks a million. We appreciate it. And I'd like to say um, I'm very proud that my city is a partner with the Women's Center. You all do a wonderful service for this community. You have for years under your leadership. We've seen a lot of positive changes and uh, your organization is very active in our community. Thank you very much, Junie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Have a great evening, guys. <clears throat> Next, I have Lisa, uh, Lisa Parker Clyburn. Lisa, Lisa Parker Claiborne. Claiborne, okay, I'm sorry. I can't. Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council Board. I just um, came to talk about the tourism dollars um, and some of the problems that we're dealing with right now. Um, of course, last year we were granted $20,000 for um, tourism, which was cut in half this year um, for $10,000 um, with stipulations. The stipulations was that we hire a professional management team um, without telling us why we needed to hire a professional management team. Um, we asked them, could they give us an explanation? Because as the event went forward, our we were told that as long as we put heads in the beds um, and did what was required of us, um, that we would meet the criteria. And we're not understanding when um, our professional team, which is the owners of Jacksonville Fashion Week, um, we feel like they're, you're calling us unprofessional. Um, it hit the Daily News. Um, I got a call. I had to do an interview over the telephone with the Daily News asking me why is the city saying that we need to hire a professional team and how did we pay for our event last year, which I felt was very offensive. I felt it was offensive to our team. I felt it was offensive to what we were trying to do. Um, and when we talked to uh, Glenn and Camille in a meeting, they asked us to give them a written um, paper saying that we would agree to the terms. Well, we did not actually agree to the terms. We gave them a paper in writing saying that if they would re reword what they said, um, that we would agree to the terms of the money. That was not done. Therefore, it hit the newspaper um, affecting us as business people. Um, you know, I received some telephone calls about the Daily News uh, paper yesterday stating um, some comments that were made from the city. Um, and basically, it's just a concern. It's disheartening. Um, it's something turned, something supposed to be good turned into so, you know, it turned bad, and I don't understand why. And today, we still don't understand why no one would tell us where the unprofessionalism is coming from. Next, I have uh, Latoya Scott. Ms. Scott, if you would, please 
uh, state your name and your address for the clerk. Hi, my name is Latoya Scott, and I live at 6246 Mississippi Street on Camp Lejeune. Um, I would like to talk about um, the racial position that was mentioned in the newspaper on my behalf. Um, the first encounter um, happened prior to Fashion Week from one of the board members on the tourism board asking if our event was an all urban event and if we were going to have um, African garbs and um, urban wear based on the fact that um, our leadership team was all African American. Um, none of the flyers, websites, or advertisement indicated such a question. Um, later after that, we had discrepancy with the advertising and public relations, uh, which was funded by the tourism dollars. The materials, uh, the materials challenged our professionalism and our brand, and was t and we were told not to pursue the matter, and was uh, and was forced to still pay for the um, unprofessional and amateur publication and advertising. Even with, the advertise, even with the adversity we had to overcome, we brought an event which not only created heads and beds for the community, but we also embraced the community and had uh, a ton of community involvement. So when the statement was made for us to bring in professional management, we were still unclear as to why this statement was made. So when we received, so when we received word of, the, uh, of that statement, we, uh, I asked them uh, what did it mean, and then we were told that they were referring to an event planner. So we draft a letter and stated that um, they should, if you could correct the terminology that was used, because the term um, um, unprof uh, professional management slash leadership is slander to our brand, and not only was our letter ignored, but both uh, but both inexperienced and unprofessional man were, were management were used in an interview conducted by the Delhi News. So our question today is, in what way is the team of Jacksonville Fashion Week inexperienced and unprofessional? And I find it very um, disheartening and um, and just hurtful. Um, uh, from the comments that were made um, because I've been in business for a very long time and I think we brought something to the city that not only changed um, not only changed a lot of people and touched a lot of people and helped a lot of businesses but we did create if if um, and anyone can correct me but we had the most heads and beds of the events that was funded thank you thank you Ms. Scott Uh, Mike Claiborne. Mike. Good evening, Mayor. How are you and the council? As you can see, my wife and Latoya comes up. Public speaking is not easy for anyone to do. And so their nerves get in the way. And so I just want to bring it all together. I think that one of the things you've constantly hear that there's a fine line that's consistently go through that we feel like we were disrespected and the half was done not because of facts and not because we did not produce. Well, we personally believe that it was personal. We believe that there is, there is a committee, uh, the tourism board is one group, but there's a committee of people who uh, are recommendation board. And one of the things that was really, we kept asking them over, you're recommending this, but based on what? Based on what? And the recommendation board, it, it seems that, that the, it was based on something personal and not based on facts or what the criteria. There are nine criteria for the funding. And we are we missed two, but we don't have to get those two because two of them, number three and number four, states uh, sports or commission, which we don't have a sports event. But we met every one of them. We felt that if you made a decision based on you didn't do results or it was results driven, we respect that. But it wasn't based on that. You know, and one of the things that I'm really concerned is that um, those people that sit on the committee, we know that there's about five people that sit on that committee that makes a recommendation but they also sit on the boards of other events. And I think that that's a conflict of interest, that you make a recommendation, but you also sit on the board of that event. Well, to me, then that, that there is something absolutely correct because we don't have anyone that sits on the recommendation board or the tourism board that can stand up and say, hey, this is what I think. I think it's a conflict of interest. And we know at least that there's five people that is on that recommendation board that 
also is, is on the events. I mean, and we can name a few if you ask or would like to have questions. We can name a few because I think that there's a problem. I think that one of the events that got picked up that was bigger than us is MCCS. But MCCS has a leader that's, or that's in friendship or relationship with someone that sits on the recommendation board. So it's like that's consistently going on. And then you question us. Well, my thing is if you question us, let's question everybody. And see what, how can we bring everybody to the table and say, listen, this is what we've done. Because my wife has been in this city. I've been here four years. She's been in this city 17 years, Mayor. And she has been a business owner all 17 years in the same location. I don't know about nobody else, but I clap that up as kudos that she's been in the same location. Our church is nine years old that she started. And it's been in this city nine years. We pay taxes here. I have ran the largest Philadelphia Fashion Week. So we have history. I've done the field, which is now... 15 years old, I created that. I started that. Latoya started Atlanta City Fashion Week, which is now in its fourth year. So we have people who are very professional, business owners. My wife and I own a beauty salon here, and now the beauty supply. We're professional people. I have never been questioned. So I was a little offended that my profession has never been questioned. We just had an event this weekend that had over 400 people at the raceway. And Mr. Humphrey said, man, you guys are together. You're locked in. You're professional. And to hear one person telling me that, uh, on Saturday and to hear this we were a little bit offended and so we are open for any questions as to you all would like to think but I believe that we wanted to bring it to the council and especially to you mayor you see me throughout the city and through here all the time and so I'm not a stranger to this community to in, any of these uh, people that are here thank you thank you Reverend. So we're going to uh, appreciate y'all coming out tonight, and uh, I hear hear what you're saying, and uh, it will certainly be taken under advisement. Adoption of the consent agenda and minutes, uh, folks. I think that's the next item on the agenda, and I would entertain a motion to uh, adopt the consent items in the minutes. So moved. There's two sets of minutes: the special workshop meeting and the regular meeting. Moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Next, we have reports, and I'm going to start with Mr. Warden. Proud to be here, sir. No report. Ms. Washington? No report. Mr. Willingham? I just wanted to commend the um, police chief, Yanero, uh, for the um, presentation that, that he made to the workshop. Um, he just does such a, a wonderful job in the community and his overall concept of um, policing and the community um, component of that is just very impressive. And um, we're seeing around the country a lot of uh, crisis in our uh, policing and um, fortunately we haven't had any kind of crisis and I think it's more than fortune. I think a lot of it has to do with the the leadership in the police department. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Wilmingham. Mr. Bittner? I'm going to echo those comments, and other than that, I have no report. Uh, quickly, uh, I attended the uh, uh, police uh, memorial week last week. Uh, we had it out at the Commons. Uh, I believe you were there, uh, Mr. Warden. And uh, that went very well. We had a very good showing. It was uh, the one time of the year that we have an opportunity to memorialize the service of of police officers that have given the ultimate made the ultimate sacrifice uh, in protecting uh, the citizens they're sworn to serve. Uh, we have actually two officers that were uh, JPD officers that were killed in the line of duty uh, many or several decades ago that we still honor to this day. Uh, they were good friends of mine that I worked with at the time, and. Uh, you know, each year it, 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 it makes me feel good to at least be able to, to see people recognize the fact that they once existed, you know, and, and, and once served this community. And I hope that, you know, that recognition will continue beyond me, you know, that we will not let those people uh, be forgotten. Um, and with that, I will turn to you, Ron. Do you have... Uh, any report for us tonight? <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I uh, just want to remind uh, Council that uh, 
this Thursday, the 21st of May, is the JOED annual meeting. It's being held at the Onslow County Government Complex. What is the time on that? It's 1130 to 1 o'clock. And the, uh, the, the chair or the uh, Secretary of Commerce will be here, as well as Mr. Chung, who is the uh, exec chief executive officer of the, uh, the private Economic Development Corporation that the state has established. There will be speakers. If if you're uh, if you want us to uh, make a reservation for us, please just let us know. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, unfortunately, that that same day uh, we have a employee recognition picnic that's going to be at the Commons. It's between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So if you Try to get both of them in there. If you come early, you can touch base with the picnic, or you can catch the picnic at the after the, uh, the economic development meeting. Uh, the other thing, a reminder that next Monday is Memorial Day. It's uh, the city offices are closed, therefore that affects your solid waste sanitation service. Uh, those normally collected on Monday, their pickup will be delayed to Tuesday. Those normally collected on Tuesday will be picked up on Wednesday. No change to those who have their pickups on Thursday and Friday. There will be no yard waste collection next week. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I, uh, just to complicate things for Friday, does my memory serve me correctly that that's the groundbreaking for the movie? Yes, this Friday. Friday. Yes, sir. Friday. The other one's Friday at 10 o'clock. Friday at 10. This Friday. Yes, sir. The other ones you talked about, I believe, were Thursday. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. It's in the management report, right? Yeah, for, uh, okay. Yes, sir. The, uh, the groundbreaking for the, uh, the Marine Museum is, is 10 o'clock on Friday. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Carter? No report, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yeah, so moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye.